Hello, my lovelies, and welcome back to Listen Closely. I am your host, Bobby, and again, we are joined by my husband, John. Hey, guys. And I have some news. You have some news? I have some news. Okay. This is the last time I'll be talking about my show for the year. <laughs> so I won't talk again until next year. You're silly. I know. And if you haven't guessed by that, we are going to be talking New Year's. Uh, New Year's comes with a lot of folklore, superstitions, traditions, and just a lot of different things. Okay. So we're going to be talking all things New Year. And before we do that, if you haven't followed any of my social medias, what are you doing? You should probably go follow those at HTT Listen Closely. You can find me on just about everything except for Twitter. I do not have a Twitter. It's just too much drama on that. I say that big at Facebook has a lot of drama. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, HTT, listen closely on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. You can also email me, HTT, listen closely at gmail.com just to let me know how I'm doing. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, I believe they're the only ones. Definitely leave me five stars. Give me a review. Let me know how I'm doing. And before we go any further about New Year's, we do have some terrible news that my husband decided to tell me while I was at work earlier today. So go ahead and just say it again. Yeah, so um, obviously we are recording this on New Year's Eve. Unfortunately, one of our favorite actors, a, a icon in the entertainment industry, Miss Betty White, has passed away today at the age of 99, just 17 days away from her 100th birthday. Thoughts and prayers go out to her friends and fans and family all over the world. She was one of the greatest actors and uh, actresses the world's ever known. So... Yeah, normally we don't cover, like, you know, celebrity or, you know, deaths in general. Yeah. But, I mean, how can you not talk about Betty White? It's just one of those, like, it hits everybody. Right. Everybody's seen something with her in it. And if you right. haven't, I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Like, she is in everything. She's an icon in so many different circles. And she will definitely be missed. Absolutely. All right. So now that we have all the sad stuff behind because you know it's going to be a new year let's let's think about happy things yeah so let's talk about new year's and new year's traditions so do you know how long we've been doing new year's i would think since the uh the calendar was invented so you would be incredibly wrong really yeah and this actually shocked me so according to history.com which is one of my you know main go-to's because if anybody should know anything it should be them Right. The earliest recorded festivities in honor of a New Year's arrival date back some 4,000 years ago to ancient Babylon. Really? For the Babylonians, the first new moon following the vernal equinox, which is the day in late March, with an equal amount of sunlight and darkness, heralded the start of a new year. And so they would mark the occasion with a massive religious festival that involved a different ritual on each of its 11 days. Hmm. So it's actually been going around for quite a while. They didn't have the calendar at the time to, you know, say it's January 1st. That would come later on. But yeah, so like we've been doing New Year's celebrations for a long, long time. Right. And do you know how long the New York City Times Square Ball has been dropping for? I do not. So... The most iconic New Year's tradition, obviously, which is this New York City's Times Square gigantic ball that drops at the stroke of midnight, has taken place almost every year since 1907. Oh, wow. So it has, uh, it's got a reputation and millions of people watch it around the world. That's why, you know, we have different drops because they drop it almost every hour for the different time zones and the different places. Yeah. And there's a, you know, there's a whole show that goes with it. I mean... Like we always talk about when we were younger, it was Dick Clark's New Year's Eve special. That's what we watch now. I believe that uh, Ryan Seacrest has taken over his spot. And so they basically just, you know, they have the night to watch the ball drop in New York City at Times Square. And it's always a, a great time. And, of course, you know, once the ball drops, they sing, um, I can never pronounce it correct, Odd Lang Sign. And everybody has a good time. But, I mean, it's, it's definitely – I would say it's the biggest celebration of New Year's um, in in the world today. I mean, it is, but have you ever seen, like, the Chinese, or I oh, want to say it's the Ooh. Australian, or Paris? Yeah. Like, those major cities, they go all out. Yeah. Like, they're, they're one of the ones, like, we all, like, they contend. It's like New York, Paris, I don't remember where in China that they do it. And then, um, I want to say it's Australia. 
Yeah. Where, like, they have those huge barges. I know Paris for sure. Like, they have a huge barge, and then they, like, go crazy and just a lot of celebration. And it's really it's really nice. And one day we will go to New York. Yeah, I would love to. I mean, that's just, that's I think that's, like, everybody's bucket list thing is to be in New York in Times Square for New Year's. That's on everybody's list. Yeah. So let's jump into some of these New Year's traditions. I do have a list of 10 that I found. Okay. Now, most of these are for luck and wealth. However, some of them are, they're a little bit different, and I actually kind of like them. Okay. So obviously, we're going to go with the first one, which is the kiss at midnight. Right. And, oh, before I go any further, I tried to find, like, where these traditions came from, and I couldn't really find them. So, like, the kiss at midnight, everybody does it, but I couldn't really find why or, like, when, why it happened. Okay. So we have the kiss at midnight, which everybody knows. One is eat 12 grapes at midnight, no more, no less. Right. The other is to fill your cupboards. Make sure that they are full because if they are not full by New Year's, that means you're going to be living in poverty or, like, you know, without food. So they say to make sure that you're you're stocked up. Right. To keep extra cash in your billfold and wallet. And that's, again, for will. Right. This one is don't clean your house and or wash your clothes, which we talked about earlier. Because you yeah. said, well, you said to wash all my blankets because it's about to be freezing cold. Yeah. But also. I forgot about that. I can't wash tomorrow. Yeah, you can't wash and you can't clean. Right. Another one that everybody's been talking about, especially on Facebook, is to open your doors and windows to let the old old year out and the new one in. Right. Which everybody says we definitely need to do this year. Absolutely. <laughs> they say to not start the new year crying because sadness will be the whole year round. Right. I've heard that one. Um, this one's really popular in the South, which is eat greens and black eyed peas, which we will go more into a little bit later. The next one is to make noise, to just make noise in general, to scare off all the bad spirits and omens. Right. And the next one is don't eat chicken. I've heard that. I, and I hope you have some kind of insight to that because I've never understood why. If you eat chicken, it's considered bad luck. But this website kind of made it like make more sense to me because I'm like, why would chicken bring bad luck? Okay. Because chicken may make your luck fly away. Ah. So that's why they say no chicken. Another one had said turkey too or like poultry. And I didn't understand why chicken and turkey were being picked on. But now that makes more sense. Yeah. I actually have some myself that I found. Okay. Um, so, and these are these are country specific. So, in Thailand, it was once tradition to fire guns to frighten off demons. Which I mean, to me, makes the same sense as the make noise. Right. Uh, and that's what most of these are. Uh, in Denmark, and this one's kind of funny to me. They throw plates and glasses against each other's front doors to banish bad spirits. Okay. Yeah. And then there was one other one. Uh, you know, obviously China, which China is known to have beautiful, you know, spectacles of fireworks. Mm-hmm. Fireworks are their thing, but they do it for a reason. Uh, it says in China, firecrackers routed the forces of darkness. So okay. um, basically they would follow the light and follow it away from the people. And then in Ecuador, this is the last one here. It's tradition to burn effigies of famous people to destroy bad juju from the past year and start fresh. Uh, and then, of course, other countries, it says, you know, chimes from clock towers and church bells always ring in the new year. So uh, that's a little bit about the noise that you make during New Year. Right. So there was another one, stuff about, we were talking about eating. You know, the Indians in Pakistan, uh, rice, which is one of their, you know, great crops, it promises prosperity if they eat rice. Okay. So, and then I've heard this. And actually, it's kind of funny because I've been getting into video games lately. Well, one of the video games actually mentioned this. In Rosh Hashanah, which is the Jewish New Year, you're to eat an apple dipped in honey. Okay. Don't know why. You, that's just what you do. I mean, so, I'm sure it's to for like a wealth luck thing. Yeah. I mean, honey's gold, so surely it's something about wealth. But, uh, but yeah, that's some really cool ones. Yeah. And I, I told you we're going to talk about it now that we're talking about food. Um, the black eyed peas and greens. Yes. Like that is one of the staples here in Texas or the South. Like you walk anywhere, like I work at a grocery store and you cannot believe how many cabbage and black eyed peas have been like flying off the shelves. Or you might hear the, you might actually hear the terminology hopping Johns. Have you ever heard that? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, that's actually one of my, favorite things to call it <laughs> because I had never heard it until an older uh, 
older lady had told me about it. And I was like, what is a Hoppin' John? And so basically it's, it's the same. It's, it's the black eyed peas, but they add stuff with it. Like bacon. Uh, some people use celery, green pepper, stuff like that. They just add it all to the beans to make them a little bit more delicious, I guess. But that's something cool, uh, you know. So if you ever hear somebody call it a Hoppin' John, you'll know, hey, they're still eating black eyed peas. It's just a different. Well, it's cooked with, uh, right, pork fat and rice, right, and it actually originated with the early African slaves, right. And it's kind of a testament to the endurance of uh, Southern traditions, correct. Of you know, like we've kept that for so long, yeah. And so the black eyed peas and the greens. Do you know what each one stands for? So if my mother told me correctly. Uh, the black eyed peas are for good luck. Okay. The, the greens are for money or good wealth. Right. That's what I believe. Yes, and you would be correct. Okay. <laughs> um, I wanted to make sure mom was right. Black eyed peas <laughs> also are a symbol of strength. And that's because of a very old myth that's been floating around that according to the Texas Department of Agriculture, some folklorists believe that the tradition goes all the way back to the Civil War. Uh, the myth says that northern troops destroyed southern crops and black-eyed peas were the only food left. And because of, you know, the southerners were so grateful to have anything to eat to survive on, and the black-eyed peas basically kept them from starvation, they became a testament to the southerners' inherent strength. And, you know, since it's really hard to verify whether this story is true or not, it's just become tradition that continues on to this day. Yeah, I so I had always heard the story of the Civil War, um, and that's the reason why we had the, you know, the black eyed peas and the cabbage and stuff. Um, so, and, and that's what I've heard from everybody. So, I, you know, like I said, you can't you can't verify it, but at the same time, you know, if you hear a hundred people telling you the same story, more than likely, it's it's got a little truth to it. Yeah, I'm sure there is some kind of truth to it. I don't know how, like, 100% true it is, but, like, there's got to be something to it. I mean, obviously, during the war and stuff, food was kind of hard to come by, and I'm sure they had harsh winters back then, and they didn't have the things that we have today to survive those things. Right. So I'm sure there is some truth to it. I, I don't know. That's just that's one that I've always heard, and, you know, growing up, I was 100% like, yeah, that's true. Makes sense. But, I mean, obviously, I grew up, and I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and we still do it, you know. We're not, we're not shy. We don't shy away from the traditions that we've grown up with. Um, I still today, in fact, I will make it tomorrow. She's been asking me about, she asked me about it today. I, I make smother fried cabbage and we do our black eyed peas and everything. And we do not do black eyed peas. Uh, I, okay. I do black eyed peas. I do not. I, it's <laughs> maybe I'm the reason we have bad luck. I, <laughs> I don't know because I do not do black eyed peas. I will, I will tell you right now and you can blame the next year on me. Yeah. Because I, I don't do them. So there you go. It's all her fault. It's all my fault. I'm yeah. sorry. I let you guys down. Oh, and I and I, in reading, I learned a little bit more about the 12 grapes. Okay. Um, tradition says that, so they have to eat 12 grapes during the 12 strokes of midnight. So the last 12 strokes until it hits midnight. Tradition says that if they succeed before the chimes stop, they will have good luck for all 12 months of the coming year. Makes sense. So... Yeah. What if I could only eat like three, and then the rest are so I just I got lucky three months. You're gonna have a good first quarter, <laughs> I guess. Uh, well, see, maybe the grapes will save me. I can do some grapes, so yeah, the grapes oh, will be my savior. Can, I just have the question of: Can you eat them all at once, or do you have to eat them like one at a time? Um, the pictures I've seen were the grapes on a skewer, so I imagine one at a time. Okay. I mean, that's the pictures I was looking when I was like doing some research. But I don't know. Given another thing. Have you ever heard of giving a New Year's Day gift? No. So back in the older days, um, in Rome, gifts of gilded nuts or coins marked the start of a new year in Rome. Hmm. Uh, the Persians gave eggs to, uh, they traded eggs to different women. Uh, it was a symbol of fertility. Uh, early Egyptians traded earth earthenware flasks that you might always have a drink during the new year. And in Scotland, coal, shortbread, and silverware were traditionally exchanged for good luck. See, coal's a good thing. That's why yeah. I try to tell y'all when y'all threaten me with coal because I've been bad. My parents always threaten me for Christmas, hey, you're going to get coal. It's not a bad thing. Well, and I'm sure because you got to think, what is coal? You know, what's created out of coal? Diamonds. Diamonds. So 
I didn't care about that. I cared about you get enough pieces of coal, you can make barbecue. Or if, yeah, or a good fire. <laughs> or a good fire. Yeah. Like all things are good. Coal is not a threat. Not Absolutely. to me. Not to me. And now we know that they give it out for New Year's. Yeah. So there we go. Absolutely. That's just a couple of the New Year. There are tons of New yeah. Year traditions and folklores. We can spend all day on this because, like, each religion, each uh, country, like, each different individual has different things that they do. Right. So, I mean, we can spend forever on this. I definitely recommend going and doing your research because it's actually pretty interesting right. of, you know, just different things that people do for New Year's. Yeah. And obviously, you know, the, the we all know the Chinese New Year, which is not January 1st. Correct. It is a different day. And that alone has, you know, some really beautiful things about it. So I definitely recommend that y'all go do your own homework, you know, look into this. I'm only giving you the smallest amount of this. There are tons more on it. Yeah. With all that being said, we hope that y'all have a very fun but very safe New Year. Do yes. not drink and drive. Yes. I definitely recommend that you find uh, another alternative way to get home if you plan to go home. Or if you can stay where you are, if you're at a friend's house, crash on the couch. Yeah. I mean, or call a friend. I mean, find a way to not drink and drive. Right. Nobody wants to start the new year with very bad news like that. Right. And bring your pets inside. Yes. If you have some outside pets that kind of get frightened with the loud noises, obviously people would be popping fireworks and doing all kinds of things outside. Bring them in. Just better safe than sorry. Even if your pet likes fireworks or like doesn't mind them, still bring them in. Be safe. Yeah. And also, uh, something that, you know, is close to my heart because I've done it myself and I'm an adult, but please watch your children and please be careful yourself when lighting fireworks. It's, it, can, it, it can become a very dangerous thing. Yes. Um, you know, always make sure that, uh, especially if you have uh, like mortars or something, make sure that the mortar casing is sitting upright. It's not to the side. Otherwise, it's going to shoot and catch on fire. And make sure that all of your wicks to your to fireworks. your fireworks are long enough to where if it is something that's going to explode, you can get away quickly and you can actually get away. So yes, just, don't be a Terry. Yeah, please be safe with fireworks. Do you get my reference? Yeah, back it up, Terry. Yes. Yeah, please. Don't be a Terry. Put your reverse, Terry. Yeah, do not be a Terry. Be safe. Luckily, he was safe that year, yes. and he is still safe. But still, don't be, no, be right. safe. Number one thing, whether it's, you know, popping fireworks, whether it's drinking, whether, I don't know, even eating, yeah. whatever. Be safe. I want to see y'all all next year. Absolutely. And if you can only do one thing other than all of our warnings. It's listen closely. <laughs>